Ready? Press record? Yep. Okay. And action! Hello from North Carolina, everyone. As you probably already know, it's been a while since we've posted a video. As due to equal parts laziness and equal parts us being too busy adventuring. Um, so, the next few episodes are going to be a little bit different than our previous episodes as we try to catch you up on all of our adventures so far. So for today's episode, which is episode 6, um, we are going to focus on the Long Island part of our journey, where we go from Block Island in Rhode Island over to Orient Harbor, which is our first stop in New York, to Port Jefferson, and finally on to Port Washington, which is just outside of New York City. Yeah. So like I said, the next few episodes are going to be a little bit different as we catch you up. Over the next few episodes, um, including this, we're going to do Long Island. Uh, you'll see us fail and then succeed uh, going through New York City. Um, we'll sail down the east coast of New Jersey, up the Delaware, through the CND Canal, and down the Chesapeake Bay. But for now, without further ado, what you've all been waiting for, Gypsy Days, Episode 6. Cruising Long Island. We nailed it! Boom. Good job, bud. After spending a wonderful three days in Block Island, it was time for us to continue our journey south. A wet morning and another stunning sunrise later, we pulled anchor and were heading out of Great Salt Pond towards Long Island. Hi, Block Island! As we headed into Block Island Sound, the winds were blowing a steady 10 to 13 knots from the northeast, and it was the first time we had ever really sailed with the wind behind us and following seas. Alright folks, so we left Block Island just over an hour ago, we've gone about six and a half miles so far. Um, we were sailing for a little bit, but it got a little bit too windy and out of hand, so uh, we dropped the jib and we have a reef in the main so that we can sail safely, sail smartly as Tyler says. Um, so, a little bit chillier today than it has been, which is fine, it's a little bit wetter air. It rained a bit last night, it might rain a little bit again this morning. Um, but so far not too bad. We, we are currently on the race, on the flood toward Long Island, and we're hoping to make a 30 mile day today to get to Orient Point. Um, and then we can hopefully from there to a 40 mile day tomorrow and get to Port Jefferson and get nice and tucked into Long Island Sound. That's Block Island with us, but they are much faster than us, so they are way ahead of us already. And uh, yeah, we're just trucking. We're going like six knots still. We've got the main reefed up here and the motor on because we're afraid to turn it off. But yeah, let's see when we get to Orient Point and see where we get. As happy as we were to be moving again, a windstorm was forecasted to blow through over the next few days. We set a course towards Orient Harbor, which looked on the charts to offer a good protection for the upcoming wind. Orient is a quiet little town with a small yacht club in the harbor. We dropped the pick in the north end of the harbor and got settled in for the upcoming windstorm. We quickly learned that we had not chosen the ideal location and ended up being much more exposed to the east than we had expected. With the rising wind and rain, it became too unsafe to take the dinghy ashore with our tiny outboard. Okay, so the wind's only supposed to get stronger and stronger. I'll show you. So there's that kind of spit of land as a beach. And the wind was coming pretty hard off and it was kind of shifting north to northeast and back to east. Um, so the wind was coming 
coming in pretty heavy over there. So we decided to move a little bit closer to where the Yacht Club is. We got this bulk of land kind of protecting us. Um, also, we are now a bit closer to the beach so that we can take the dog um, out to the beach that, without having too much trouble. We only have a small outboard, so we don't have a lot of power to get through much waves or wind or anything. So being closer is going to be much better. So we don't have to have him hold it for 24 hours since he's not trained to go on the boat yet. Um, so yeah, it already feels a little less windy here. Um, it's still windy for sure, but we seem to be getting pounded a little bit less. Um, so hopefully we are going to be able to ride out the storm tomorrow when it gets even worse um, here without too much trouble. The storm started early in the morning with constant 35 knot winds that blew all day and night. It left the three of us cold, miserable, and a little queasy. We spent the day lounging in bed, watching TV shows, trying to get coffee to do his business on deck, and checking the anchor. Hey guys, so it is Monday morning. I don't know, might even be Monday afternoon now. Just been having a lazy day. Um, a little crazy out here, what you see. We got up the setting sail or the anchor, anchor riding sail or whatever. Um, which has definitely helped with the rocking and rolling. But, still blowing pretty hard. Fine, still northeast winds. It's supposed to change a bit more to east, which should protect us a little bit more. But, um, yeah, it was fun to make coffee and breakfast this morning in a super shaking roly-poly boat. We did that before we put up the anchoring sail, um, which luckily Tally reminded us we had. So, it's been a little fun. Um, Aaron got a little queasy, didn't really enjoy this morning too much. Um, unfortunately, it is much too choppy to take the boat out, especially because our outboard kind of hates us half the time um, and isn't really that strong in wind. So, we're trying to get the dog to go on the deck um, so far unsuccessfully. But hopefully he'll figure it out when he has to go and um, at one point in the late afternoon, we dragged anchor and had to reset it in that nasty wind. We're coming dangerously close to that rock wall, and that wasn't great. So, got up, quickly pulled anchor, came a little bit closer. It is Tuesday morning. Made it through the night. Didn't drag again, thank goodness. Um, it's a little foggy, but we can still see a little ways, so we're still gonna be taking off this morning. Um, gonna take the dog to shore. Just finish up some stuff. We should be leaving around 6.30 to catch the tide at Plumgat at the right time. So, yep, just getting everything and getting the heck out of here. Um, the winds finally died down after maybe 2.30 last night. Uh, we're still wet. Didn't sleep very well. Woke up all the time trying to check that we were dragging, but luckily we stayed in place and we are on our way further down Long Island. We woke up the next morning cold and tired and wrapped in a thick fog. We left Orient Harbor in Gardner's Bay, rounded Plum Gut, and began our trek down the sound towards Port Jefferson. So calm and quiet. Yeah, it's nice. Except for the odd uh, fog horn. Alright, so it's about 9.30. The fog is mostly lifting. I mean, it's still a little foggy, but... It's alright, not too bad. Once we round this point, we'll be continuing a little bit further port, which will be more south west, I guess. Um, and then we're a straight shot to Port Jefferson, but a straight shot of 40 miles or so. It's gonna be a long day.
As we motor sailed along the north coast of the island, the day began to burn off the fog and it grew warmer. As it cleared, we made our way to Port Jefferson in comfort and style. We are approaching Port Jefferson, which is our next stop along Long Island. It's been about a 50 mile day and it's tiring. The other days for me have gone a little bit faster, but this one went way slower. I think it's because we were stuck on the boat in storms the last two days and I'm just anxious to get to our next place and really just get out of Orient. But we got around the green buoy, I don't know if you can see it there, the Mega Shoal, and then we'll enter the harbor proper. Port Jeff is a deep water harbor with ferries coming and going between New York and Connecticut. When we arrived, we decided to pay for some comfort and headed down the harbor to pick up a town mooring for $50 a night. I had no idea that Port Jefferson was like this huge, busy harbor. It looks so small on the map. Um, but yeah, there's a big tanker about to leave. There's another one just coming in. And then there's another one back there that is coming in as well. Plus there's a mega ferry that goes who knows where. Um, yeah, a little busy. I'm glad we got in when we did and only had to wait for a ferry to get in and out. Because this would have been freaking terrifying. The ferry just backed up out of there. Turned around in that teeny tiny space and is now heading out the channel. It is good captainship and my worst nightmare. Also, super pretty boat in front of us. Check me. Going back to the boat to eat. I'm hungry. That was good. What? What were we just doing? I'm going to cook corned beef hash and we're going to go take out the dog. What were we just doing? Oh, we're working on episode 4 of the video. Yeah. I talk too much in the video. Yeah, we all know that. Walking down Port Jefferson. It's a really cute little town. More ice cream stores per building than I have seen in any other town ice cream, and chocolate, and caramels. There's another big ice cream thing. There's another ice cream thing down there. Or two, sweet and savory, where we had breakfast yesterday. Wait, you want to go get a rice pudding so you're breaking the storm? Yeah. What? It's pretty cute. We spent a lot of time editing videos in Port Jeff and not enough time filming ourselves enjoying the town. But trust us when we say it's a cool little place with lots to offer. From laundry and showers for cruisers, Brazilian jiu-jitsu for mini, and all the confectionery treats you could ask for. Look at these awesome cakes. Yeah, so Port Jeff was a really cool town and very cruiser friendly. Um, its mooring field is run by the town as opposed to a private marina and with your payment for the mooring field you get unlimited water taxis into town and back to your boat um, coin operated laundry restrooms and showers we also ended up making friends with one of the water taxi operators named Jim um, he was super cool, gave us a lot of really great advice, and even after we had left Port Jefferson, he even called us like later that day to make sure that everything was going well and that we made it to our destination, so he was really awesome. Um, if you're ever in Port Jefferson, make sure to give Jim our love and tell him that Gypsy Days made our way just fine. Yeah. Um, some highlights of Port Jeff uh, would be the amazing food. So, if you're ever visiting the area, make sure you pick up some burritos from Salsa Salsa. You eat some ramen at Slurp. Um, 
you eat some crepes and rice pudding at Sweet and Savory. Seriously, this whole restaurant is crepes and rice pudding. That's like my dream. But anyways, another highlight from Port Jeff was having Aaron have to do our first manual pump out with the old little lifty pump thing. Um, so we had to prime it for about five minutes before we could get any juices flowing, so to speak. Um, but we got it to work because we had really needed pump out by that point. So it was good. He put some muscle into it and it worked. We definitely got a little bit of poop on the decks, poop water on the decks, and Aaron might have gotten a little bit on his hands, but no harm done, and we were pumped out and ready to go. Yeah, uh, it was a manual, manually primed pump out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, finally, after our pump out, we were heading out of Port Jeff and back out into Long Island Sound and on our way to Port Washington. We just left Port Jefferson maybe about half an hour ago. Um, Quite big swell, actually. We timed it. We're about we left about 20 minutes before the flood started on the race, um, so we could get optimum time taking advantage of that. The wind's coming pretty much directly behind us, so I feel like with the wind behind us and with the flood pushing us, we should be going like seven knots, but we're going like five and a half, which is our usual speed, which is kind of annoying. So maybe once the flood picks up, it'll help bring us a little further, faster along. But we are motor sailing again, because we just need to get to our destination before dark and taking the time to try to practice sailing when we have to be somewhere before a certain time is uh, probably not our best bet today. So on another shorter day, maybe we'll take our time and figure out the sailing thing a little bit better. But for now, motor sailing again. All right, Erin is at the helm, reading the water so that we can surf. From Port Jefferson to Port Washington, we had the wind behind us and following seas. So Aaron spent much of the day practicing surfing at the helm. And when that got boring, it was time for a dance party. So we're heading west down Long Island Sound. We're trying to get to Port Washington tonight. And tomorrow go through the city, go through East River and Hell Gate. Just want to show you guys something. Up on the horizon we got sky, uh, skyscrapers and buildings way up there. Let's see if you guys can pick it up with this camera. Hazy, looks like it might be raining over there. But that'll be pretty cool to go past that. Port Washington is an absolutely stunning harbor town, and the last major stop heading down Long Island before entering New York City through Throg's Neck. The banks of the water are lined with the houses of the super rich. It must also be a fish haven, 
because everywhere we looked, there were feeding frenzies with fish jumping out of the water. These fish have been going crazy for an hour. Look at how close they are to the top. Another one out. It is a gorgeous morning. Anchored out here in Port Washington. Alright, so yeah, um, Port Washington, also very, very cool harbor town. Um, the way rates work in Port Washington uh, is unique. You can pick up a mooring ball there for relatively cheap. It's only 20 bucks. Oh, no, sorry. You can pick up a mooring ball for free for the first 48 hours, so two as, nights. As long as it's a yellow one. So don't pick up another one and expect to be free. Yellow. Yeah. Yellow the, mooring ball. The town mooring balls. So they're free for the first two nights. Um, but while those are free, it's $16 round trip per boat to get from your boat to town on the water taxis. No, it's $8 per person. So if you have more than two people on your boat, it'll be more than $16. Yeah. Um, and then, but after you'd spend two nights at a mooring ball in Port Washington, um, it's 20 bucks a night for the mooring ball, but unlimited free water taxis. Um, another cool thing about the town is there's a dinghy tie-up at the town itself, at the town dock, but also a dinghy tie-up at the the local supermarket, the uh, the Star Market. So we were able to take Gypsy Wagon, our little dinghy, all the way to the supermarket, tie up, go grocery shopping, and then bring all the groceries back to the dinghy and bring it straight back to the boat, which was really cool. Yeah. So that was our trip down Long Island, um, ending in Port Washington, round one, as you will see. Um, we really like both Port Washington and Port Jefferson. We didn't like Orient Pearl Harbor so much, but that was more to do with the weather and our experience there than it was anything to do with the town. I mean, we weren't really able to go into the town and explore, so um, we can't really say anything about it. But bad experience just because of the weather, not so much because of the town. Um, we absolutely recommend any cruisers passing through the Long Island Sound to make sure you visit the Sound side of New York. Um, we were a little bit afraid to go on the outside, but we really enjoyed everywhere that we stopped. Um, everywhere we went, the people were really welcoming and friendly, and the views were spectacular, even in bad weather. So, that brings us to episode 6. Um, the end of episode 6, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned for episode 7, where Erin's sister comes to visit. We try to take her back to New York City, where she lives, and run into a little bit of trouble. Um, so we pretty much failed miserably at our first attempt at New York. And you'll see what happened and what we did to fix our little problem in episode 7. Stay tuned for episode 7! Gypsy days! Yeah! Woo!